Do you love traditional sour beers or beers that develop character over time like Imperial Stout? But do you avoid brewing these styles due to the time and logistics involved? If so, then a Solera may be the solution for you. Hi, I'm Brian from Sui Generis Brewing and in this three-part video series I will walk you through the process of starting and managing a Solera. In the first video, which is this video, I will go over what a Solera is and how to set one up. In the second video, I'll discuss how to manage your Solera, and in the final video, we'll go over how to finish the beer that comes out of the Solera. But before we get into that, what exactly is a Solera? A Solera is a way of brewing a perpetual beer. Functionally, it's a fermenter from which you regularly remove a portion of beer to consume, and you replace that withdrawn portion with freshly brewed beer. After a set aging period, you can then withdraw the beer from the Solera and refill it. And that process is repeated, and in theory you can keep such a Solera going indefinitely. Now you might be wondering what the point of that is. What's the advantage of withdrawing and replacing a portion of a beer from a fermenter instead of just taking the whole volume out? The answer is simply that the average age of the beer at each withdrawal will be more than the time between those withdrawals. What that means is you get a continuous output of beer whose average age is greater than the time between those withdrawals. So to make this clear, let's go through an example. Imagine you fill a barrel with freshly brewed beer and let it age for six months. At this point, you have six month old beer. Now you remove half of that beer and refill the barrel. Your beer now has an average age of three months with half of it being new beer and half of it being six months old beer. You age that beer for another six months, at which point you have a barrel where half the contents are 12 months old and half the contents are six months old, meaning the beer has an average age of nine months. Again, we're gonna withdraw half that beer and refill the barrel, giving us a blend that is 25% 12 months old, 25% six months old, and 50% freshly brewed for an average age of four and a half months which will increase to 10 and a half months when in six months we pull beer from the barrel. This average age at withdrawal will eventually reach a conversion age of 12 months, meaning that after this point, every time you withdraw beer from the Solera, you'll get a beer of an effective age of 12 months, but you get a beer of that effective age every six months. But you don't have to use that schedule and you can adjust the amount of beer you withdraw and the timing between withdrawals to get a beer of nearly any effective age that you desire. In the previous example, we withdrew half the beer every six months to get a convergent age of 12 months. But we could withdraw a third of the beer on the same schedule to get a convergent age of 18 months. Or we could replace half the beer every eight months to get a convergent age of 16 months. So that's how Hustlero works. But how do you go about making such an approach function? First, you need to decide on what style of beer you want to brew. This can be any style that benefits from prolonged aging. That includes clean beers like barley wines or imperial stouts or some of the higher gravity Belgian ales, but it also includes sour beers. And it's really in the context of sour beers where Solera shine. That said, there's no reason not to use a Solera for a clean beer. And in many ways, a clean beer Solera is much easier to manage than is a sour beer Solera. Once you've decided on a style, the second thing you need to develop is a vision for the beer. Now that might sound a little corny, but having a clear vision is probably the most important factor in having a successful Solera. The reason for that is you're gonna be adjusting the character of your beer on each of those refills by modifying your base recipe. Without a clear vision of what you're trying to achieve, you're gonna really find it difficult to design those refill recipes and this can cause problems. As an example, nearly 12 years ago, I started two Soleras. The first was a Flanders Red Solera that was aiming to replicate my favorite commercial beer. The second, I just called everybody in the pool and the name says it all. It was roughly based on a golden sour recipe and I would just toss into that any interesting bottle drags or wild cultures that I captured. Because I had a clear vision for the Flanders Red Solera, it consistently produced excellent beer for over a decade. Unfortunately, I just had to bring it to an end recently, and I'll discuss what went wrong with it in the second video in the series. 
Now in contrast, the everybody in the pool slurry was hugely variable in flavor from one fill to the next. And that's because I didn't have a clear vision. So because of that, I was kind of changing things on a whim. I wasn't really designing recipes to hit a consistent endpoint. And so it really wasn't until I decided to start using that beer as a base for blending and making fruited sours that it really started to come to its own. And in fact, today, that Solera is my workhouse and it's completely central to my sour beer program. Once you have a vision, you then need to decide on the conversion age you want to achieve. Now for clear beers, anything between sort of eight to 14 months is typically a good range. This way you can bottle the beer and still have a fair amount of time to age it but it's still coming out of your Solera at a reasonable age. Sour beers tend to be more complicated. The desired age is dictated more by that vision. But in general, you're going to need at least 12 months to complete fermentation. And even at that age, it's still gonna have some off flavors that need to be cleaned up and some residual fermentation that will need to occur. But beer of that age is a really good basis for fruit beers because there's enough microbial activity left to give a good fermentation of those sugars from the fruit and it leaves a lot of space for extended aging of the fruited beer. But in my opinion, a convergent age of 16 to 20 months offers the most flexibility. At that age, the beer is fairly stable, it should have cleaned up most of the off flavors, and in many cases, you will get a beer out of that Solera that you can simply package and enjoy. But that beer is still young enough to leave room for blending, for making fruited beers, or doing other things with it, so it gives you sort of more flexibility than a younger Solera would. Now Soleras with a convergent age of 24 months or more are very specialized. These beers tend to have very intense characters, uh, high sourness, lots of Britannomyces flavors, and so it makes them good for blending stock to add complexity into younger beers, but it limits their use sort of as a standalone beer. You can't even really use them as the majority of a blend. So unless you have a really large sour program, having a perpetual blend, a, a Solera, with an age of 24 or more months probably isn't a very practical thing to do. Once you've decided on that average age, you next design a brewing schedule to ensure that you get enough beer at the desired intervals. That process can be a little overwhelming for some brewers, so I've created a few tools to help with that planning. This chart allows you to easily find the combination of refill percentages and time between withdrawals that give a desired age. To use this chart, decide on the conversion age you want and identify the corresponding color on the scale. You then want to draw a line along that color gradient on the chart itself and any intercept from the X and Y axis that intersect this line will represent a combination of refill frequency and volume that will produce the desired conversion age. For example, if we want to withdraw every six months, we'd have to remove and replace 35% of the volume each time to converge on that uh, 18 months of average age. Conversely, if we want to remove half the beer at a time, we need to wait eight and a half months between withdrawals to hit the same conversion age. Of course, any other combination of age and volumes that intersect that line can be used to manage your Solera. Now, if you don't want to use that graphic, you can use this table. It works in the same manner. It's just text rather than an image. And to use it, you simply identify the cells that have the desired conversion age, and then look to the row and column headers to find the corresponding aging period and withdrawal percentage to achieve that conversion age. I'll provide links to both of these resources in the video description below, so feel free to use them as you see fit. Of course, this plan can and will change as your Solera progresses. You may change your schedule or your volume that you remove based on a need for a younger or older beer or for changes in the amount of volume of beer that you want. As an example, my Everybody in the Pool Solera started off in a 23 liter carboy with a planned conversion age of 12 months, which was achieved by withdrawing 11 liters every six months. I aged the beer for nine months at the start to more quickly push the beer towards that desired conversion age, and then began started pulling beer, uh, half of it, every six months. As you can see, the schedule did very little from pull to pull because life and other factors delayed the occasional fill. While the system worked well, the 11 liters of a beer it produced was too small for my needs, and the beer was a little on the young side. 
So at the nine year mark, I expanded this to a 56 liter Sankey keg. Whether than making withdrawal, I transferred the full 23 liters of aged beer into the keg and then topped up with an additional 33 liters. I allow this to age until a conversion age of 16 months and then begin withdrawing 22 liters every six months. I have created a tool which can be used to track the age of your beer, even with an irregular schedule and with changes in fermenter volume. Now I'm going to demonstrate that in video two and you will find the link to that tool in the video description for video two. The next thing you need to decide on is the fermenter itself. You need to be able to fill it completely. So you may need to adjust your brewing volume to match the size of your fermenter. You need a fermenter that will limit the ingress of oxygen. So things like plastic buckets or anything lacking an airtight seal should be avoided. Glass or thick plastic carboys are an excellent choice as are anything stainless like kegs, conicals, or those fermentation buckets that have a good seal are also excellent choices. A traditional option is barrels. While these are a good choice, they do require a lot more management and they come with additional challenges such as the loss of beer through the angel share. Factors like microoxygenation and issues such as leaks can also make it a little more complicated to run a Solera in a barrel. But that said, there's no reason why you can't use a barrel for a Solera, but I really recommend you do a lot of research first and make sure that you're comfortable with the management of the barrel before you dedicate one to a Solera. In fact, it might be a good idea to run a couple of non Solera beers through that barrel first to get the barrel management down before dedicating one to a Solera. Once you've chosen your fermenter, you next need to decide how fermentation will be managed. As a rule, I would recommend fermenting the beer separately and then transferring it into the Solera once primary fermentation is complete. This will limit the buildup of yeast and trub in the fermenter and that reduces both your risks of autolysis off flavors from aging yeast, as well as the loss of volume that comes with that buildup of material. That said, you may lack the ability to ferment on the volume you need to fill your fermenter during those different fills. And in that case, just make an effort every time you're siphoning beer out of that Solera to remove some of that yeast and trub in order to keep the volumes of that under control. Once the beer is into its fermenter, there are a few other minor things that you need to consider. The first is whether you want to add some oak. Now, assuming that you're not using a barrel, of course. Oak can add some flavor to your beer. It may also act as a reservoir for the bacteria and yeast and, and therefore provide a bit of stability to the culture between fills. A second factor to consider is whether you want to try and induce some degree of microoxygenation. So this is what would take place normally in a barrel but if you're not in a barrel, you're unlikely to have much microoxygenation. So microoxygenation can help to produce some of the desired aged flavors we are seeking in a Solera. But the problem with it is if you overdo it, you go from microoxygenation to just plain oxygenation, and that can of course stale and ruin the beer. Now, if you wanna add some microoxygenation, it's quite easy. We simply open the fermenter for a few seconds once in a while. In my opinion, it's typically unneeded and it's actually more likely to cause problems, but I do know people who've had success with it. It really depends on your fermenter and just how airtight it is. Lastly, you need to decide on your fermentation temperature. Maintaining a constant temperature might be difficult with a larger fermenter, but it may be important, especially if you're in a warmer climate, because if it gets too warm, you can start to develop some unwanted off flavors, particularly if you have a mixed culture, uh, some of the bacteria will start to put out flavors you don't want at warmer temperatures. Now, in my case, my Solaris live here in my basement, which fluctuates between 16 and 22 Celsius over the year. So I don't have to worry about temperature control, but of course your mileage may vary. So that's a lot to plan. But once you have all of those factors figured out, you're now ready to formulate a recipe. If you're planning on running a clean beer Solera, this is very simple. You just take your favorite recipe for the style of beer you're brewing. Really any well-validated recipe for that beer style should work. The only thing you need to keep in mind is you are gonna lose a bit of hot bitterness as the beer ages. So you might need to knock up that bitterness level a little bit more than you would normally. Likewise, Higher alcohol beers tend to age better than lower alcohol versions, so I'd recommend fermenting something at least 6.5% alcohol and preferably over 8% alcohol.
But outside of those two factors, most recipes should suffice. We'll talk more about planning refills in the second video, but the refills here tend to be very close to your initial recipe with only minor tweaks to the malt bill and hops needed to adjust your flavorness and bitterness. For the yeast, choose whatever strain is typical for the style. It's usually going to be fine. Now that said, for English style beers like barley wines and imperial stouts, there are dedicated yeast strains that are intended for longer aged beers and higher gravity beers. And those are the ones that you should be aiming for. Now sour beers are a little bit more challenging in their formulation. And that's because you need to set that beer up in a way where it'll develop a long lasting and stable culture of the bacteria and yeast. Because of that, you need to design a recipe that will allow for the establishment of a strong culture at the start. Otherwise, you might find it difficult to maintain your Solera. Now in terms of a recipe, any sour beer recipe for the style you're seeking to produce should be a good place to start. They're already designed for long-term aging and to support a sour culture, so they should be a good starting point for your Solera. But that said, you might have to adjust your hopping levels to match the culture you're intending to use. For a sour beer Solera, you'll find that the recipe changes a lot each fill because it's those changes to the recipe that allow you to control the development and the character of that Solera. Because of that, an exact recipe is hard to nail down, but here's an example of my everybody in the pool recipe. You'll notice the grain and hop amounts and the mash temperature are expressed as ranges. And that's because those are the values I'm altering to control the development of this Solera. How I manage those factors is a huge topic and it's the focus of video two, so I'm not gonna say more about it here. Here we wanna focus on the values to use when you're first starting your Solera for that first fill. The first thing to consider is your mash. You need to generate a highly dextrinous wort because those dextrins are what are gonna feed your Botanomyces and your Pediococcus for the months and years that your Solera is gonna last. There's two ways to do that. The first is to conduct a traditional turbid mash, which is a mashing approach intended to drive the formation of complex carbohydrates such as dextrans. I really would recommend everyone try this at least once in their brewing careers. Uh, turbid mashes are a ton of fun, but they also take a whole day. So not everyone's gonna to wanna to dedicate that kind of time every time they wanna fill their Solera. So the second option is pretty much the polar opposite of that, and it's also the easiest. You mash very hot for a very short period of time. This is actually my usual approach when it comes to my Solera. I'll mash at 70 to 72 degrees Celsius, which is almost mash out temperature, mash out temperature 76 Celsius. So this gives a very quick conversion of the malt, typically in 15 minutes or less, but the wort is highly dextrinous. It's just as dextrinous as you would get from a turbid mash. Next, you need to consider your culture. In terms of culture, there are three main options. Your first option is to purchase a commercial sour beer culture. This is actually what I would recommend if you've never run a sour beer Solera before, because these cultures are designed to be reliable and predictable. And you can actually get from some manufacturers cultures designed for Soleras. Your second option is to use a bottle culture from a sour beer that you like. Now you need to make sure that the beer contains the original culture and hasn't been pasteurized or had a bottling strain yatted. Always make a starter to ensure that those dregs are viable and make sure you're pitching a reasonable amount. While bottle cultures can be a great source for a culture, it can be hard to determine whether the brewery has pasteurized the beer or added a bottling strain. And unfortunately, either of those can ruin the reuse of that culture. In addition, if that beer has been aged for a long time, parts of the cultures may actually have died off and so it may be somewhat of an incomplete culture. As such, I'd only recommend you use bottle drakes to start a new Solera if you are absolutely certain that bottle culture is suitable for reuse. Keep in mind that you can always add bottle cultures to a Solera that's been established if you want to expand its microbial range later on. Your final option is the highest risk option, and that is to use a wild culture or even to cool ship your beer. This can be a great way to explore your local flora, but it's also high risk because you can always capture a wild culture that may render your beer undrinkable. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with using that as approach, but just be aware that it is higher risk than the other options and is more likely to end up with a failed Solera than are those other options.
The last thing you need to consider is your hopping rate. Hops are inhibitory to lactobacillus and they can block the souring of your beer if you overuse them. Most commercial suppliers will give you a recommended IBU range and I would suggest you start on the lower end of that range. For most bottle cultures, 8 to 12 IBUs is typical, but again, I would start on the lower end of that, or maybe even push down to uh, 4 to 5 IBUs until you're confident that that culture is behaving as it should. Wild cultures tend to be extremely sensitive to hops, and generally speaking, you want to be under 5 IBUs when working with a cool shipped or wild culture. Sometimes I even go as low as 2 to 3 to make sure that everything has a chance to establish. So that's a lot to go through, but we're at the final step, actually brewing the beer. For this, brew it as you normally would, put it in a primary fermenter and ferment it out, and then transfer it to the Solera and begin aging. Other than keeping that airlock topped off, you can take it easy. That is until about a month before your first planned withdrawal. But what you do then is the topic of video two, so we'll talk about it then. So until then, thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you in the next video.